After crime-ridden homeless encampment was cleared in downtown Seattle, a rat problem emerged. That's what we're talking about today here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Nope, we're not the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. We are news for reasonable people. See what I did there? I took a mistake and just transitioned it in there. That's what we're talking about. We have gone from real estate to rats. Reason I wanted to cover this story is that a lot of folks are under the if they if they don't follow, you know, homelessness and all the the other issues associated with this massive massive issue going on throughout the United States, particularly in some West Coast cities, uh, <laughs> if you don't follow this, you just kind of think, well, it's a handful of people who are down on their luck and it doesn't really, you know, they're, they're just kind of living their lives quietly and, you know, there's, there's, there's not a lot going on. They're just trying to get back on their feet. Well, that is not necessarily the case. And if you watch this and if you follow this podcast through today, you'll kind of find out, oh, yeah, there's some other stuff going on. You probably already know about it because you've heard me talk about it before. But rats, yes, rats are a byproduct. Believe it or not, if you leave large piles of garbage on say a sidewalk or, you know, an alleyway or a street, large piles of garbage, you know what that'll attract? Rats. You know what happens when you clean all the garbage, including all the homeless encampment tents? You'll have a bunch of rats that get dispersed everywhere else. So this is one of those deals that you need to talk about. You need to kind of understand, oh yeah, garbage begets rats, begets rats going everywhere when said garbage dissipates and their environment gets rocked. I remember watching video of um, the homeless encampment being swept down in Echo Park down in Los Angeles, just outside of Skid Row. And that was one of the things that, you know, there'd be plywood, on, you know, on top of a grass area and somebody would have a tent down. And when they pull that plywood up, there'd be, you know, just these burrows of, you know, trails in the, in the grass. And it's like, oh, that is so hardcore. So not mice. No, we're not talking, you know, cute little mice or Mickey Mouse, you know, cute, big airs. Um, now you're talking the big teeth with the gigantic tail and just, you know, carrying diseases and whatnot. So these folks are living in that kind of environment because they just leave their garbage and they're living in squalor. They're doing drugs and they're living in squalor. And this particular homeless encampment, I've talked about a number of times. We're going to get into it. Let's just take a little bit of video and kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Worker at the Cairo 7 Live desk, people in the area of Mercer and Dexter sent us this video where very large encampment was swept and cleared last mm. night after outreach workers offered shelter and support to the people who lived there. Well, a neighbor told Cairo 7 there have been waves of rats scattering out of the camp area all around Dexter, and they were hoping the city would have a plan so the surrounding area and the businesses there don't become infested too. Well, we've seen this before. When camps are cleared out, rats, which can burn underground scatter around developers are legally required in Seattle to do rat abatement before a demolition project in parts of Northern California rats have been tracked by an infrared cameras by sheriff's deputies after big encampments are swept to track out track down whether abatement teams are effective or if the rats are only moving to the surrounding places the neighbors told us they are grateful the camp is gone because they say it was the scene of a lot of violence and theft a 30 year old man who lived at the camp was run over and killed during a violent confrontation there back in July. At the live desk tonight, I'm Gary Horker. All right, so there's that. That guy had to cover this story as well. Um, yeah, so that's one of the byproducts is rats. And then when you clear the area out, the rats need to go somewhere. Their food source has been eliminated. Their shelter has been eliminated. Their home has been eliminated, which was this homeless encampment. This is not uncommon. You see this time and time and time again. So there's that. So when you want to talk, you know, when people want to talk about, well, they're just living peacefully. There's no, 
there's no impact to the environment. When you have a whole bunch of garbage on the ground and you've got rats living there, tell me that that is a clean environment and it's good for the environment. Tell me that's a good thing. Now, now you got to do it with a straight face. You, you got to tell me that it's a good thing with, with the straight. Now, you can't do it, can you? Because you just know it's not. It's not reasonable. It's not reasonable to have people, number one, living on the sidewalk, you know, peeing on the sidewalk peeing on the local business, defecating on the sidewalk, I mean, shooting up on the sidewalk, shooting people. So I, uh, through folks that I know, the leader of this homeless encampment um, carried around a gun, carried around a loaded Glock 9mm, I believe it was, just as like in his waistband. Yeah, so y this is what this is that type of homeless encampment. It's like, okay, now, there's pe lots of people in other encampments with guns too, but it's like, okay, yeah, it's not just some people down on their luck, you know, trying, trying to get, trying to pick themselves back up. No, these are people who are choosing this as a lifestyle. That's what we're talking about here. And the one incident that uh, this news reporter just talked on briefly, it was a situation where a husband and wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, who knows, whatever, um, with a baby, with a two week or two month old baby, a baby baby. You know, when some people say, ah, my baby, and it's like this two year old, and you're like, that that's not a baby. That's like beyond toddler. That is, you know, small human being. This was a baby was in the backseat of this car. They drive into this very encampment that we're talking about. They are looking to repo a pair of sneakers, must have been nice sneakers, not really sure. They're looking to repair, I believe it was a pair of blue sneakers. And then they were looking to repair a set of some kind of, um, uh, what else were they? Speakers? Oh, oh, Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. So they were looking to get those back or buy them or who knows. And there was some discussion and there was some disagreement upon said payment and or what was happening with said goods in the homeless encampment. And so somebody literally brought out like a machete, starts beating on the front of the car. Somebody starts tussling with the driver. Somebody starts tussling with the wife in the passenger side. They reverse out. I mean, just this melee of violence going on. And they book it out and hit this 31 or 30 year old kid, pop him up in the air. He comes down and he's dead. So when you've got an environment like that, you know, you can kind of tell people that, ah, they're just living peacefully. They're trying to get back on their feet. Well, not entirely, not entirely. And then you dump the rats in there. For those even the, on, on the audio portion, some of the footage of the rats was like infrared. They were, um, they, they were doing, uh, you know, videoing the rats when they're moving around at night. And it looked like one of those war type videos where it's, uh, you know, Im Im uh, thermal imaging. It looked like that. And you're like, are those, are those bunnies? Are those, are those little, no, those are rats. They're big. I mean, these rats were big, the ones here in Seattle. I don't know how long they were, but I mean, yeah, that's not, that's not a tiny little mouse that's, oh, look at the cute little mouse. He, he dug a hole into our sack of rice. Oh, he's so cute. No, these are, these are disgusting rodents. They're, they're gross. All right. So after crime ridden homeless encampment cleared, rat problem revealed. Oh, just had to do this one. A resident said that there have been waves of rats scattering out of the camp. Can you imagine looking over? Just, oh, yeah. Whole bunch of rats. They're leaving. All right. There's the first shift. All right, there, there's the third wave. Okay, there goes the reinforcements. All right, bringing up the rear is platoon number 64. These are rats leaving an area in downtown Seattle. And you know, when you've got an old building or something, that's one thing because those rats are probably in there and oftentimes buildings take a long time to get demolished or you know, you're tearing it down or whatever. That is one thing, but having rats living there in a downtown and urban environment because they're making a choice to live there and live this kind of lifestyle where they don't pick up their garbage. 
Yeah, there are consequences for that. And the consequences are that the neighboring businesses have to deal with nonsense like this. It's crazy. People were hoping the city would have a plan so that businesses in the surrounding area would not become infested. Really? You're really just hoping that they'll have a plan. No, nah. you can't hope that a city that has this kind of craziness going on has a plan at all because they don't because it's just crisis management at every single stop of the way. In the past, Cairo 7 has shown video of rats after camps have been cleared, leaving the critters to burrow underground and scatter. In parts of Northern California, rats have been tracked on infrared cameras by sheriff's deputies after big encampments have been swept. That was done to determine the effectiveness of abatement teams or to see if rats were just moving to other areas. Ugh, so ridiculous. Um, people, we'll finish this off. And we're going to look at another one real quick. People living near the South Lake Union encampment told Cairo 7 that they're grateful the camp is gone. This camp was a... It was a train wreck. There was always something going on. Somebody was getting in a fight. There was a um, fire after fire. I mean, and this this is literally almost in the shadow of the Space Needle. It's like right there. So when you come from where I live, which is in Bellevue, east of Lake Washington, we go across a bridge, one of a couple of bridge, and we get off on the major exit to downtown from the north end, major exit called Mercer Street. Mercer Street literally is what this camp abutted to, Mercer and Dexter. And Mercer Street, I mean, you could literally drive by, and this is a major entrance into the downtown corridor. You drive by and, oh, yeah, all right, is somebody cooking something? Are, are they having a barbecue? Oh, no, that's a tent on fire. Oh, God. Oh, geez. Hope so nobody got hurt. That's literally what we're dealing with from one of the most busy streets in downtown Seattle, taking traffic to downtown, the big high rises and all this. Oh, all right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is that? Wow. Are they putting up smoke signals or what are we doing here? Literally. You got tents on fire. You got people being run over. You've got rats. Wild stuff. Okay, we're going to take another quick peek here. And here's another video. Now at six, less than 24 hours after a Seattle homeless encampment was cleared, new tents have set up camp one block away. City crews removed a notorious encampment from a field near Mercer and Highway 99 yesterday. And now tents have appeared right across the street. Tonight, business owners say they're frustrated, saying the city is simply moving the problem around instead of solving it. Como's Tammy Mutasa is taking business owners' concerns to city leaders. She joins us live with this Project Seattle report. Tammy? Eric, while that camp behind me has been cleared, the problems are far from over. We actually saw people doing heroin by the new tents, and they didn't care that we saw them. And you could smell the stench of human waste by the alleyway. That's not good. Everywhere you look, there's feces, um, there's urine, garbage, um, used needles. When the crime and safety problems were across the street, it was bad enough. Now the folks at Copiers Northwest fear they're going to get worse with campers moving right to their doorstep. I'm concerned that things aren't getting better. I'm concerned that here we are years later and there's too much talk, nothing's happening. Not even a day after crews cleared the notorious Mercer and Dexter Avenue homeless encampment, some of the tents have already moved to the sidewalk along 99, right in front of the business. We saw some of the relocated campers openly doing drugs. Everyone says, oh, this is a great idea. Let's move everyone. Look what we did. And then they just move somewhere else. Do what you say you're doing. Follow through. Help the people. The encampment had a history of violent crimes caught on camera. All right, so here is, here's footage of... Uh, yeah, that incident I was just talking about where the guy got killed. Including a machete attack, a deadly hit and run, and tent fires. We have employees that have been assaulted and harassed, um, so that's definitely uh, a concern for us. We have people breaking in the back entrance trying to get into the building. While the city's HOPE team says 33 people accepted offers for shelter, another 17 turned down the help. An outreach worker telling us some of the campers even barricaded themselves in a vacant building. They're barricaded in. They've, they've, they've brought tools and stuff, and they're in there right now. 
This right here is our dumpster area and recycling, and currently they are using the space in between for a toilet stall. And as more tents take over the sidewalk, they're demanding to know what the end game is. I would say, um, what's the plan? Everybody in Seattle typically asks, what's the plan? Yeah. Solution to the problem at all, no. So the Hope team did give me an update about this encampment that was just cleared, but when I followed up about the new situation with the tents just down the block, they still haven't gotten back to me. What? Oh my gosh. They didn't get back to her? They didn't get back to her over the new encampment? Damn it, we just cleared out that one, and now you're asking about another one that's popped up? I mean, what can you do? I mean, we, we cleared that one. You asked and you asked. You spent like two like two years asking to get rid of this encampment. And, you know, we did. And then, phew, you are demanding, demanding. Those new tents, I mean, they're barely set up for a day and you're asking us to take them down. Oh, we can't do that. I mean, you know, it's, it's Seattle. It's free Seattle. We're not, we're not, we're not down with that. No, of course not. It's wild, right? I mean, this is literally, and, and what's so crazy is I did an interview with um, Andrea Suarez of We Heart Seattle, and it was so close to, to exactly what we're talking about here that after the interview, I was like, hey, I grabbed uh, my video guy and said, hey, let's walk down there and just, I want to take a look and see what's going on at the encampment. So we did, and it was it was like, a, I don't know, a Wednesday morning at 11 not a lot going on at the, the encampment. I mean, it's not prime time for people being up and around and, you know, doing stuff. Um, so we walked down there and I walked around. And what's so crazy is that one minute you're on a downtown street that is filled with like Google type people. And because literally Google is down there. Amazon is down there. Um, you know, all these, you know, nice businesses. And we were in uh, some kind of, uh, co not a co-op, but some kind of club-ish environment that had, you know, coffee bar. It was nice. It's all nice. And you walk a couple of blocks down and you get into one of these areas. It's got a homeless encampment. And it's like, whoa, which third world country am I in now with gray skies and you know, space needle popping up in the background? Because literally you've got a beautiful view of the space needle. And yet people are pissing in the sidewalk you know, shooting up drugs, running over people, setting each other's tents on fire, or who knows what they're doing. It's crazy, right? Okay, so, um, you know, this storyline here is okay, uh, got got cleared. And it's a uh, now it's just literally a street away, they've, they've moved to a street away. Then this has led to some to frustration for some business owners who said that the city is just moving the problem around instead of solving it. It's exactly what we've got going on. And like the, like uh, Tammy Mutasa from, uh, is that Cairo? Is that Co That's Coma. Like she said, yeah, no, no, when, when she questioned them on, hey, they moved. What are you going to do about that? Mm, yeah. And then she wasn't asking the city. I think she was asking the Hope, which is kind of the outreach program. Unless you're putting these people in treatment or, places where they can get mental help, this isn't going to go away. This is just ongoing. These people are living here by choice. And so there's got to be some consequences. You've got to have consequences of some kind, because otherwise they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. We're going to keep having rat problems. We're just going to be moving the rats around, moving the encampments around, moving the violence around, moving the shootings, moving the driving over people. And it's just just crazy degenerative insanity. That's what we got. That's what we're dealing with right now. And um, like I talked about in my last podcast, uh, it was cl they cleared out a very dangerous section of Third Avenue in downtown Seattle between Pike and Pine. And uh, actually, that should have looked like this and this, this and this. Yep. So cleared out of one kind of a, a, a big block long radius uh, section of um, Third Avenue. And then those people committing all the crime there, doing all their drugs, selling all their stuff, buying all their stuff, they're just going to move somewhere else because why wouldn't they? That's just how this goes. So people that say, well, we cleared that one out. Well, that's good. But where'd they go? 
Well, a few of them probably took some temporary housing, but until you start, you know, drawing a line in the sand and saying, hey, there are consequences for living in a tent in, in you know, public property. You know, that's, that's a no-go. It's a no-go. You need to get them the help that they need. And if they don't want to accept that help, then there's got to be consequences. That's kind of where I sit on this one. And I will keep covering this topic because there hasn't, I, I think major media has tried to, you know, put a spotlight on it. But I don't see a lot of people podcasting about it. So since we're reasonable, and this is news for reasonable people, and this is a completely unreasonable topic, having rats running around the city after a homeless encampment gets cleared out. <sighs> yeah, we're going to keep we're going to keep this coverage going. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for being a part. Love to have you subscribe, hit that notification bell. Give this video a like. Yeah, a like. Thanks again. Talk soon. Bye for now.